What's going on ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Brad back with another video. And what I want to talk about in this video is cardiac output. Are you listening? Nurse Pass. Beast Mode. Grind it. So if you are studying the HAR or any kind of hemodynamics, and you may have come across that a little equation, cardiac output equals stroke volume times heart rate. I kind of want to break that down because it can be a little bit of a difficult concept for people to understand. So this is for my nursing students out there. What is cardiac output? Heart rate times stroke volume. So what is heart rate? The number of times that your heart beats per minute. What is stroke volume? Stroke volume is simply the amount of blood ejected out of your left ventricle per beat. So cardiac output is the total amount of blood ejected from your left ventricle in a minute. Now that's simple enough to understand, but where it becomes interesting is when you start looking at the factors that affect stroke volume. What are the things that affect the amount of blood being pumped out of that left ventricle per beat? Preload, after loading contractility. You may have heard those as well, but let's wrap our mind around those a little bit better. Now, preload is often described as the amount of stretch put on the ventricles at the end of diastole. But what does that really mean? It's simply the amount of load, the amount of blood in the ventricles at the end of diastole, right before the heart is about to contract again. That's what preload is. So, of course, preload is going to affect your stroke volume. If you have too little blood in the tank to be pumped out, that's going to affect your cardiac output. You're going to be pumping out less blood. Next thing is afterload. Afterload is simply the amount of resistance that that left ventricle has to pump against in order to get blood out of the heart. So, what are examples of afterload? Hypotension. If you're in some kind of shock and you have systemic vasodilation, you have hypotension, you're going to have a decreased afterload. The pipe that the heart has to pump blood through is going to be much larger. It's vasodilated, so it's not going to be meeting much resistance at all. Uh, on the other hand of things, hypertension, if you have vasoconstriction, that is a, sm a more narrow pipe that the heart has to pump blood through. So that, that would be an increased afterload, an increased resistance that your heart has to pump against. And of course, that is going to affect the stroke volume, tying it back in. The third and final thing is your contractility. So how well and how effective your heart is able to contract is going, your ejection fraction, for instance, is going to determine how much blood you're able to pump out. That those are the three things that affect stroke volume and that is how it ties back into the overall concept of what is cardiac output if you can sit there and break those things down and think about it just like that what is stroke volume we know what heart rate is what are the factors affecting stroke volume then you can begin to tie it in to understanding the concept of cardiac output i hope that word vomit made sense if it didn't, let me know down below. If it did, let me know down below and share it with a friend. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below. I'm putting out content every week to motivate, uplift, and inspire you to be the best damn nurse you can be. It's your boy, Nurse Bass, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.